Hey guys, now that we have talked enough about colors in the last three videos, let's begin with a new design ingredient today, typography. Typography is the art and technique of arranging type to make written language legible, readable and appealing when displayed. This can be achieved through various techniques such as selecting a suitable typeface, choosing font sizes, line spacing and letter spacing. To select a typeface, we need to know about the anatomy of type. Let's see them one by one. X height is the height of the lowercase letter X and is usually the height of all lowercase letters. While cap height is the height of an uppercase letter. Base line is the line on top of which all these letters sit. Each letter is born when you wield a brush or a pen and make a few flicks. Each flick results in a stroke. Some strokes are straight and some are curved. A main vertical stroke is called as a stem. Stroke that protrudes above the normal height of a lowercase font is called as an ascender. And that which protrudes below the baseline in a lowercase letter is called as a descender. Ascender lines and descender lines mark the boundaries up to which the ascenders and descenders can extend respectively. An arcing stroke is called a shoulder if it's found on the top or just arc if it's found elsewhere. A closed curved stroke is called as a ball and a trailing out stroke is called as a tail. A diagonal stroke that rests mostly on the baseline is called as a leg. While a short horizontal stroke in the middle of a character is called as a bar. Bars that connect two other strokes are called as crossbars. A long horizontal stroke at the top or bottom is called as an arm. The curved bottom of a lowercase letter is called as a loop and a very small stroke at the top is called as an ear. The dots on top of a few lowercase letters like i and j are called titles and the angle that two inclined strokes make is called as an apex or vertex. When the angle is formed on the top it is called as an apex and when it's formed at the bottom it is called as a vertex. Therefore the letter V has one vertex and the letter W has two vertices and one apex. Apart from the strokes, we also have some decorative edges at the terminals or ends of each stroke called as a serif. Which brings us to our next section in this video, the types of fonts. Depending on whether the fonts have these edges on the terminal of their strokes or not, they are classified into two types, namely serif and sans serif. While serif fonts are suitable for print, they are considered old fashioned for display. A display or monitor usually has a low pixel density compared to the density of dots in a printer. Therefore the text we see on monitors are not as crisp as you would see on print. Serifs make it harder for us to distinctly identify a character, especially when they are small and are of low resolution. Therefore, it makes sans serif a suitable choice for the body content of any text you see on a display. Apart from these two, we also have script type fonts and decorative fonts. Script type faces have a fluid stroke that resemble handwriting. They are not suitable for large body content because they demand lot of concentration from the user to identify what is being written. Decorative fonts also known as display fonts are these stylish looking fonts that appear to have ornaments or patterns to make them look more attractive. While they are also not suitable for body text containing lot of characters, they stand out from the rest of the formal text making them a viable contender for large headings and captions over images. Monospace fonts are another category of fonts that are of uniform width and they are uniformly spaced. You would normally find these fonts on your calculator, on your code editors and in articles where mathematical calculations and expressions are involved. Their uniform width makes them ideal for these applications while also diversifying them from the regular formal text. 
If you are interested to know more about the types of each of these families, I have attached an article from fonts.com in the description below. Font Sizes Font sizes are usually measured in points, picas, inches, pixels, percentage, ems and rems. A pica contains 12 points and 6 picas form an inch. Therefore, 1 inch is equal to 72 points or 6 picas. While all these three measurement units are fixed in nature, percentage M and rem are relative. That is, a font size of 100% is equal to the default font size setting of your browser. Therefore, it may vary from browser to browser or devices to devices. Let's assume your browser is set to 16 pixels default font size, which most browsers are out of the box, unless you change them then 100% is equal to 16 pixel is equal to 1M. This 1M can also be defined as the width of a capital letter M at the default font size. Next, line spacing. Line spacing, also known as line height, is the space between two lines of text. Normally, line heights are 20% larger than your font sizes. Therefore, if your font size is 1M or 16 pixels, then your line height is something like 1.2m or 19.2 pixels by default. A good line height would be 1.2 to 2 times your font size, depending on whether you need the text to be moderately or loosely packed. Any value below 1.2 times the font size may make the lines appear too tight and may pose a challenge for readability. Letter spacing Letter spacing, as you might have guessed, is the space between letters and is usually of two types namely kerning and tracking. Kerning is adjusting the space between individual letters, while tracking is adjusting the space uniformly over a range of characters. While adjusting the tracking is generally a better habit, in some occasions where you find letters with diagonal strokes such as A and V together, you might have to play with kerning as well. My advice is to better leave them to their defaults unless you know what you want very precisely. So now you know what typeface to choose for what application, how a font size is measured, what's letter and line spacing, and how to modify them for a better effect. We'll talk about our next ingredient, images, in our next video.